In this quick product demonstration, we're going to address fabric deployment and the provisioning in the Cisco ACI. All of this is done automatically for you and we will check to make sure this has been carried out. The Cisco ACI operates over a leaf and spine architecture. We will confirm this by checking the individual ports on each ACI node, along with the LLD and ISIS status. We will also examine the traditional data center design that is based on a three-tier architecture that had many drawbacks which forced us to move to a leaf and spine data center design. So the first thing we should do is check the topology and ensure that the discovery process has been completed correctly for you. Firstly, we will click on fabric on the top left hand side and then we'll go to topology to get an idea of the ACI design. So in this demo, we have a relatively small design that consists of one spine and two leaf switches along with a single APIC controller. For a production environment, I would recommend having additional ACI spine nodes along with APICs for the purposes of redundancy. For further information, we can click on each component to extract more technical details. And it's here you will see the model and serial number along with some performance information that is useful for initial monitoring of the fabric. So next we click on fabric membership and you can see that the three components, the spine, the leaf A and the leaf B, have a status of active. So we have what's known as a data center fabric and every vendor has its own version of this fabric. So we had a three tier data center architecture and it had to support bridging, which caused problems with the rise of virtualization. And also we had problems with the port count on the core switches was extremely low. So when you want to design very large data centers, getting a core switch with the necessary port count was extremely challenging. With the three tier data center model, we have a number of layers. Well, we got three to be exact. We have the access layer, the aggregation layer, along with the core layer. This type of data center design started in the early 90s and we started to see a change from this around the mid 2015 mark. So around that time in 2015, the traffic inside the data center was orders of magnitude bigger than we had leaving the data center. And while this was happening, which was the start of the east to west traffic, users really don't care what type of data set design you have. Users care about bandwidth and how they can access the services to get their jobs done. So with about 90% of bandwidth within the data center, we have two servers that are next to each other and want to communicate. And this should be done at line rate. These servers will be connected to the same access switch. Then we could have servers that are connected to adjacent switches that want to communicate. And it's here we'll have some kind of oversubscription ratio. Then we have to traverse the core and we will hit another layer of oversubscription. So we have layers of oversubscription that will reduce bandwidth available. So in larger data set environments, this did become a big problem. So we had new data center requirements. Firstly, we needed equidistant network with non-blocking to the core. We also wanted unlimited placement of workloads and mobility within a reasonable radius. So we want to deploy workloads wherever we want. And this was brought by the VM mobility requirements. We also wanted lossless transport for storage and other types of elephant flows. This was when we wanted storage traffic over ethernet. We also wanted simplified provisioning and management. So this is where the new data center fabric came to play on the Cisco ACI that is based on a leaf and spine architecture. So to confirm this architecture with the Cisco ACI, we can use different LLDP tests against the APIC controller. Here we can click on fabric and topology again. And this time we click on the APIC controller. And you can see that the APIC controller in our case is just configured 
to connect to leaf A, we have a source port of 2.2, which is on the APIC controller. And we have a destination port of 1.1, which is on the corresponding leaf that the APIC is connected to. So now that we've confirmed the basic of interfaces, we can run some tests. So we're on the APIC controller, we can run LLDB tool against the local port. And here you can see we have returned a lot of information, such as a system description, which is related to the leaf switched, along with capabilities all the way down to appliance vector. Next, let's go to the individual leaf switches and have a look at the LLDP neighbors. For leaf A, you can see that ETH11 is connected to the APIC controller and ETH1 slash 49 is connected to the spine. Now let us go to the second leaf and issue the same command. The important point to note here is that there is no interconnecting links to each of the leaf switches. So in a leaf and spine design, the leaf layers do not directly connect to each other. So as a final test, let us quickly go to the spine layer and check its LLDP neighbors. Here you can see that the spine is connected to both leaf switches. So as a final test, just before I wrap up this product demo, I want to quickly check the connectivity of the ISIS relationships within VRF Overlay 1. Here you will notice that we have an ISIS relationship of level 1 to the spine layer. We can also go to the leaf B and we can issue the same command. So as a final check, let's go to the spine layer and you will see we have an ISIS adjacency of level 1 to both of the leaf switches. So the ACI works with a fully meshed fabric network. This means that each leaf is physically connected to each spine. This allows traffic forwarding through non-blocking links. So physically, we have a set of leaf switches creating a leaf layer connected to the spines in a full bipartite graph. This means that each leaf is connected to each spine and each spine is connected to each leaf. The ACI uses a horizontal elongated leaf and spine architecture with one hop to every host in a fully meshed fabric. This gives you really good throughput and convergence needed for today's applications. So in this product demonstration, we address fabric deployment and provisioning in the Cisco ACI. All of this is done automatically for you, and we check that this has been carried out. As you know now, the Cisco ACI operates over a leaf and spine architecture. We confirm this by checking individual ports on each ACI node, along with the LLD status and ISIS adjacency status. We also examined the traditional data center design that was based on three-tier architecture that had many drawbacks while supporting a lot of east-to-west traffic.